thanks very much for uh, coming to this uh, session on uh, economics at Cambridge. So I'm going to be talking for about 15, 20 minutes, and then hopefully shorter, and then I will allow you to ask any questions you want about economics at Cambridge, and then uh, we can take it from there. So if you let me just go through the presentation, which I will try to explain what is it that we do, why is it good to be an economist, why, you, why Cambridge is the place for you, uh, why you should study here, what is it that we do here in terms of the course, and then where do our students go off to and uh, make an impact. So I have this thing which is, as I'm sure most of you know, that we look, at, we look at individuals in economics, we look at firms, we look at governments, we look at the interactions between all of them, and it's really about decision making of these, uh, these units, and uh, in, terms, in terms of scarce resources in particular. Uh, in, in macro, in, in my field, we also look at the consequences of these decisions at a very aggregate level. So in terms of what would happen in the financial markets, what would happen in terms of inflation, what would happen in terms of GDP growth. So it's very broad, it's an extremely broad subject, and uh, I, th I like this quote from Keynes, I've manipulated it a little bit, but it basically says, good economist must be a ma historian, statesman, philosopher, and a mathematician. So it's not, this is not, if you, if you think this is an applied maths course, it's really not an applied maths course. It, it, is, it is much more than that. We borrow elements from many, many different fields. So we borrow elements from sociology, from philosophy, uh, history, uh, and, and so on. And, and mathematics is really a tool uh, for us to use to get, uh, to understand the world, okay? So it's not, it's, it's not in itself. I also like the way he, he, he apparently said that you, as an economist, you must understand symbols uh, and speak in words. So one of the things we're trying to do at Cambridge in particular is to use the economics knowledge that you have and translate that into uh, uh, policy making, translate that into uh, transferable skills that you use to hopefully, make the, to hopefully make the world a better place if you're going to development economics or environmental economics, or if you go into the banking system, you go into management consulting, any, any, of, this, any of these fields. So really, uh, as I will stress, you need to have a good maths background, but what we're doing is much, much, much more than that. So um, why Cambridge? Uh, this is a, obviously, this is a, uh, the, you know, a very nice place. Uh, but the foundation of economics and the influence ec uh, economics at Cambridge has had on not just the national, or not just on the UK economics policy, not just on the discipline in this country, but worldwide is, is, quite, uh, is quite big. And I will explain that uh, in, in a second. And um, if you go on the website, and I tend to believe anything people put on websites. So if you go on the website, it says Faculty of Economics is one of the oldest and greatest faculties uh, in economics in the world. So th that's definitely, definitely true. Okay, so wh what about Cambridge economists? Who are these guys? So there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, economists, the big, big giants in economics that have come to Cambridge, gone through Cambridge, taught at Cambridge, and uh, who are, are still, at, some are still at Cambridge. These are some of the past economists. I'm, if, you, if you started studying economics or reading uh, newspapers or The Economist, you often, uh, 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 at least Marshall Keynes, Jim Murleys maybe, uh, James Mead, um, and Joan Robinson, Nick Caldor. These are just a very few, uh, very, very few economists that have gone through Cambridge and have made huge, huge contributions to, to our knowledge. So they are, uh, so they, so they, and some of them have been awarded the Nobel Prize. Joan Robinson, who is a, a top uh, left, uh, basically she, should have been the first woman to get a Nobel Prize. Unfortunately, she didn't get one, but she made huge contributions uh, to economic, economic theory and the way we think about economics. So there are a lot of, a lot of famous economists ha have, have been here. In fact, I went through the website and I was looking through, if you look at just economics Nobel Prize winners in the last half century, 11 of those have been at Cambridge at some point. And uh, some of them you might recognize. So uh, Richard Stone, Dick Stone, uh, developed the national income accounting system and uh, he was the director of the Department of Applied Economics here for, for many, many years. Um, we have uh, people like Amartya Sen for his contribution to welfare economics, and, and, and the list goes on. So loads of economists, uh, well-renowned economists, have been here at some point. It's not just that they contributed to the way uh, to economics and are thinking about economics and uh, push the boundaries of economics. It's also that they taught here. So they would have been, those, those people would have given lectures to some of the people actually who taught me here. So um, the, 
the, the extent of their influence is not just in their work, but also in their, in their teaching here at Cambridge. So why should you study uh, economics at Cambridge? Those guys aren't around. But some of these guys were taught by those guys, and th those guys are around, and those guys will be teaching you. So, and, ha and some of them have taught me. So uh, why should you come to Cambridge? I, I think I have six points. Uh, number one, you should come here because these people will give you lectures. And this is just a very few of, uh, you know, a fraction of all the faculty here. We are, we are around, I was looking actually, we are over 100 economists teaching in Cambridge. So there's a lot of economists uh, in Cambridge. And what we are doing, these people will give you lectures. But the, some of these guys uh, will be giving evidence to, for instance, the House of Lords in the morning. And in the afternoon, they will show up and give you a lecture on Brexit. Okay, so for instance, Meredith Crowley on the top, uh, top right, she will give evidence to the House of Parliament and then come, come here and give, us, uh, give you a, a lecture. You have people like David Newbery working on electricity markets. You have other people who are pushing the boundaries of economics, in particular uh, section of economics. For instance, uh, Sri Ayer, who uh, uh, works on economics of religion, is, is uh, 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 really at the forefront of economics. You have uh, people like Parta Dasgupta, who works on uh, environment and, and uh, poverty. You have people who are pushing economics in other aspects, in terms of, are the models that we are using correct? Is the, use, is the use of maths correct in economics? Should we think about economics uh, not just being model-based? Uh, so Tony Lawson uh, working on alternative uh, methods. Uh, we, we have uh, Ha Jun Chang. Some of you might have picked up a book of his uh, uh, work on economics. We have, we have historian. We have a large number of historians. So Victoria Bateman, uh, who some of you might have seen her. She has a new book called uh, uh, The Sex Factor, Why Women Made the West Rich, I think. Uh, so basically, uh, in all areas of economics, in economic theory, we have uh, Hashem Pesaran really at the forefront of this. And uh, we also have people who basically advise governments and central banks. So, and they, they will do that in the morning and the afternoon, they will give you lectures. So Giancarlo Corsetti. There are people who work at why do we need more, why aren't there, uh, why aren't there more women doing economics and why aren't there more women in the profession? Why aren't there more women in, 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 uh, in economics uh, uh, consulting or in economics in, go in the government sector uh, like Carolina Alves? So there's a huge cross-section of people here who, will, who really are at the forefront of, their, of the field and who will be teaching you. So that's number one. That's, the, that's, a, that's a really good reason, I think, to go to any place to study economics. The second one is that is really, uh, in my view, a truly magical thing we have at Cambridge. And I, if you have not come across it, it's called the supervision system. So supervision system is you have the lectures with some of these guys and many, many more. And after, so you get some contact hours through lectures like this. But then you also go to your colleges. And in your colleges, you will have small scale group discussions. We call them supervisions. In some cases, it's one-to-one, -one, so it'd be one academic to one student. In other cases, it's one-to-three or one-to-four or one-to-two. In most cases, it's between one-to-two and one-to-three. So here is really where you can challenge uh, both uh, yourself and also sometimes your supervisors about uh, ideas in economics. Why is, it this, why is this the case? Why shouldn't it be like that? Or alternatively, really think about the intuition behind the model. So you really get a, a large number of contact hours in Cambridge, and a large part of those are these supervisions, which are really, really unique. I, I think it's the most valuable thing that you get here in, in Cambridge. Uh, you also have one-to-one -one supervision, and I come to that. In the third year, you will do a dissertation. Uh, that's also another unique thing about Cambridge, actually. Not many places now uh, uh, will make you take a, a dissertation. Uh, but in, that, uh, for in doing that, which counts to a substantial part of your degree in the third year, it, you get basically one-to-one -one supervision. You will show up with some ideas. You will discuss it with an academic. You go away. You'll find some data. You come back. You discuss some more. And at the end of it, you will have, uh, you will have written a 7,500 word uh, piece which will, I mean, some of, this, uh, some of the things that I read from our economists, it's just, it just really amazing. So supervision system, small scale group teaching is really, really a valuable thing uh, here in Cambridge. And, and that will be a combination of uh, people in the college supervising you, but also other people, other economists. I mentioned there are about 100 economists in, in, in Cambridge, teaching in Cambridge. And so you have uh, uh, people at the forefront of the field giving you lectures, and then in the afternoons, uh, you go away, you solve some problems, you write an essay, and then you get uh, feedback in small uh, uh, group sessions, the supervisions. 
Okay, so anywhere you go in the world, they'll tell you we have a well-rounded, we have a very rigorous program, uh, uh, and we do here too. Um, at the end of it, we're hoping to provide you with a set of tools that you can use to be able to analyze what's happening in, out there in the world. So it's not just about learning a bunch of models and then go out in the world and say, oh, well, how does, that, how does this connect with that? Uh, we, we try to bridge that gap, and we try to give you those skills to be able to think about uh, uh, economic phenomena. And, and dissertation plays also a big component in that, which is what well, you can do it in any subject, in, in, in any field of economics. Um, we also, I said to, uh, that more, a lot of our students will go into banking, consulting, government sector, but actually we also prepare you to, do, uh, to go out and study for more. And we, uh, certainly I hope that mo a lot of my students continue doing a master's and some hopefully will also do a PhD. So we give you a really good solid, ba uh, solid ba backing on to do anything that you want. You can either go out and work or you can continue your, your education. So these are the th uh, things I think, uh, uh, I hope I've convinced you that economics is interesting, but most importantly, economics at Cambridge is, uh, is uh, where you want to be at. Okay, so what, what do you have to do to come here? Um, so I've pulled this off the website, but you, the only thing really that you need, the only prerequisite is maths. Okay, so you, if, you're, um, if you're doing the UK, if you're doing A-levels, you need to have uh, maths at A-levels. If you're doing IB, it needs to be higher level. There are also other conditions if you're following other programs, other countries, other institutions. Um, I, they will be all specified if you go to uh, undergraduate.study.cam.ac.uk uh, slash uh, in, uh, international students. Um, lots of students ask me, do I need to do further maths? Do, you, do I really need to have further maths? Or oh, my school didn't offer it, but do I have to do further maths? You don't have to do further maths, but if you do further maths, it will help you, okay? So you are, you are you, it's not a prerequisite that you do further maths, but if you do it, that would be useful for you in the first year. The program here is anyway designed so that by the end of the first year, you'll be, you, you will be doing a uh, course, uh, what we call papers here. So you do a paper on quantitative methods, which is maths and stats, and that will really bring you up to speed on the maths and the, and the stats part. So you don't have to do it, but if you do it, it's very useful. Do you have to do economics? How many people are doing economics at A-levels or equivalent? Oh my goodness, that's, that's a lot. So that's good, you're doing economics. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not essential that you do economics, it is desirable in the sense that if you do economics, you are familiar with the notions and the concepts. So it might be easier to follow the first year. But to be honest, you'll pick these up very quickly. Those of you who are, do not, have not chosen to do economics at A-levels, you will pick them up uh, uh, fairly quickly. Okay, so the advantage is you, have, you do have some background, you know the notions, you know the terminology, uh, and, uh, uh, but if you don't do it on the other hand, maybe the advantage is that you don't have a set view about what economics is, so you come with a much broader view. So there are both uh, advantages and disadvantages to do economics at A-levels or IB or equivalent in other countries. So if you, however, want to do economics, and let's say that economics is not offered, what people ask me, what should I do? You could do geography, you could do history, you could do any other subject, to be honest. I, uh, the applications that I see, it's so diverse. It's, there's n there is no typical candidate who applies to Cambridge, okay? So uh, you can do pretty much anything you want. I, I, I usually tell uh, my, my students that go, go on to do graduate studies, they say, what should, I, what should I focus on? I say, you should do what you think is fun, because if you do what's f what you think is fun, you're gonna excel at it. So don't feel like constraint. The only thing you have to do is maths, okay? Um, if, for, if let's say that there is a, a paper, there is something that you would want, you would have liked to do at uh, school, but it was not offered, uh, it might be helpful if you tell us that. In your application, you will have room, there will be space in the Cambridge, uh, once you put in your UCAS, Cambridge sends you, I think, a link to an application, you put in additional in information, and you could put that in and say, I really wanted to do uh, subject X, but that was not offered by my institution, by my school. Okay, um, Okay. so what, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, here, I've taken some subjects. Uh, a lot of people will do physics. A lot of people will do history. A lot of people will do geography. There is no typical candidate, as I said, and it really doesn't matter what, what you do because any of these subjects will actually give you some set of skills that is required in economics. Some of them quantitative, some of them qualitative. 
Okay, so basically don't worry about the mix uh, of subjects. I, I really don't like, but people always ask me, what is a typical candidate at Cambridge? And I've just told you there is no typical candidate. But if you look at, uh, if you look at the, a uh, you know, an, an individual, what would you pick out to be a typical candidate? The typical candidate would have done well at GCSE. That's how a typical candidate would have done well at GCSE. Now, if you want further information, a t uh, it they would also have obtained six A stars. This is, I mean, again, there's huge diversity in the applicants. So this is not like if you didn't get six A stars, that's it. That's not the case. The typical, the typical applicant will all clearly have done maths. That's a prerequisite, but have done pretty good in the maths. So you've had pretty well in, uh, in maths. Okay. Uh, a lot of the applicants will also have done further maths. Not everybody, as I said, but a lot of the applicants will also have done further maths. But bottom line is you, sh you should have done uh, quite well in the GCSEs, okay? Now, obviously, the pro both GCSEs and A-levels have changed, so um, the, uh, you know, what we call typical is going back historically, uh, so don't, don't, uh, don't read too much into it, but you should have, all done, have overall a strong academic record. The issue here is that it doesn't actually, uh, again, a lot of people ask me, it, but if I didn't do very well, is that it? You know, if I, I have done maths, I've got really good at maths, and I, my GCSE wasn't very strong. No, it is, there's no one thing that makes your application stand out. The unique, another unique thing about Cambridge is that we, when we assess your application, we have loads of components. We have lots of things we look at, okay? So one of the things we look at is obviously your grades, your GCSE grades. Another thing we look at is a two-hour admissions test that you sit. <coughs> I think this year is 30th uh, of October. Uh, please check on the website. And I think you need to have registered before 15th of October, uh, and you, and either at your school at, or at a ne nearby place. Uh, but there's two components to it. One is problem solving, and the other bit is that you get a text, and you, do, you, do some, you think a little bit about it, and then you write an essay. So that's, that's another component of the application process, the pre-interview assessment. Some colleges will ask you to do, again, if you go on the website, some colleges will ask you to do a test at the interview. This is a pre-interview assessment. Then there's an at-interview assessment. Not many do. Some colleges will ask you to send in written work, essays. Again, not all of them. You need to check with individual colleges. And then you have, the other component is interview. So you, everybody who gets an offer, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, will come to Cambridge and will have an interview. So, uh, and that interview usually takes the form of a subject-based interview, and it could be a general interview, or it could be two subject interviews. Um, and uh, in addition to that, obviously your package contains of your personal statement. Personal statement, be careful what you put in your personal statement. If you read a lot of books, maybe somebody will ask you about all those books. Um, and uh, also uh, remember that uh, with references. So there's a whole range of things we look at. There isn't, you know, oh, I didn't do very well in my pre-interview assessment. Is that it? No, there's a whole package of things we, we, we look at. So, um, and, I, and, and obviously we interview ev every, can every candidate. So the, and then if you've done well on all the whole package of things, then you would get an offer from Cambridge. And usually the offer is uh, A star, A star, A with an A star in maths. Again, some colleges might be, uh, you know, uh, different, give you a different set of offers. At IB, we usually ask between 40 to 42, 776 at higher level, with seven in, seven in uh, higher level maths. So a whole package of things. Okay, so that's, so why, why you should study economics, why at Cambridge, what do, how to get here. Then what do we do? Once you're here, what do we do? So, um, you might bump into Jasper. Jasper, this is in the Marshall Library, by the way. If you haven't been into the Marshall Library, you should go and check it out today. Jasper makes occasional uh, visits. And uh, the course here, what we call the tripos, the economics course, the tripos, consists of three parts. It's year one, we call part one. Year two, we call part two A. And year three, we call part two B. Throughout those three years, you have to, in Cambridge, you have to do two papers, two courses. It is micro and macro. And then every year will be different. So micro and macro foundation, you get a foundation in micro and macro in the first year, you build on that in the second year, and you really specialize in the third year. So you have really good knowledge of micro and macro by, by the time you, you, you leave here. The, but there is also huge amounts of opportunities, not in the first year, I'll explain in a second, not in the first year, but you do have, op you can take options from other departments, in particular sociology, international relations, and politics. So uh, many of my students will, uh, will do world politics. 
or we'll look at uh, capitalism. Uh, so these are run by other departments, other faculties, but you can basically borrow those papers, those courses. Um, people always ask me, do you do joint degrees? So we don't do joint degrees in terms of uh, economics and uh, you know, geography or economics and French. Uh, but the, in a very, the, sometimes uh, we do have the possibility, and all, some of my students have indeed done that, they've, they, after the second year they uh, switch to another tripos, to the uh, HSPS, the Human Social Political Science tripos, or they've done a, a third year in management science at the Judge Business School, and, or they stay the fourth year, because it could be, you've done the three years in economics and you love Cambridge so much, you're gonna stay here for an extra year and you do the management tripos at the, at the Judge. So, but really we don't do, uh, uh, we don't do joint degrees. It's, econ it's pure economics. So what do you do in the first year? Micro, macro, you do that all the time, and then, this is, this is what I was talking about, quantitative methods, which is maths and stats. This really brings you up to speed. So everybody is at the same level, okay? So if you haven't done further maths, you will, you will do a lot of work and you will catch up and at the end of it, everybody will be at the same level. But to give you an overview of economics, we also give you um, two courses, two related things, which you should, everybody should know, is economic history and another one is politics. So these, these five papers, these core five courses, Everybody has to do. This is common across all, um, uh, everybody. In the second year, so you see the students are very hard at work in the first year. In the second year, they relax more. Why? Because now you have a lot more options, okay? So in the second year, you, you have to take four papers. The first three, you have to do. Everybody has to do them. So the micro, macro, and then the, ma the maths and stats have become something we call a theory and practice of econometrics. So that's just building on the, fir the first year. Then, depending on your choice, whatever you like, you can either do development economics, labor economics, you can either borrow a paper from the politics, international relations, sociology, uh, you can look at papers on uh, philosophy, history and philosophy of economics, you can do a, a, a paper on economic history, basically you can do whatever you want. You can really do whatever you want. And then, the best year of all, the, 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 the really, uh, this is really the best year. Why? Because al although you, have, you continue doing micro and macro, you're not choosing three things. So two optional papers, and again, now you can choose, now the, the list becomes a lot longer. So you can do public economics, political economics, in, uh, industrial economics. You can borrow papers from politics, sociology, uh, international relations. Uh, you can look at the depression years. You can, you can basically do any, any field of economics. And in addition to that, you do the dissertation. The dissertation, you choose the topic, you choose the data, you choose the theory. You can do whatever you want. This the, really is the most exciting part of the tripods, I think. And you get one-to-one -one supervisions. You get to have these interactions with academics, talking about your topic, talking about your uh, data, talking about the theories, and so on. So really, uh, the, the third year is really the most fun year, I think. Um, so how does, the, how does it work? Okay, so Cambridge, we, uh, the terms are quite short. They're, they're quite intense. So mo all the lectures will be done in eight weeks. Uh, we, we are, we are, we are a little bit weird. We start on a, th a Thursday. Lectures start on a Thursday and finish on a, on a Friday. Always confusing me which week we're in. But we, we are, you are here for eight weeks. And then you have big chunks uh, of holidays. So for uh, around Christmas and Easter. Where you can, where obviously all of you will uh, revise and do a lot of work. So you have these periods, and then you come back, and depending on which year you're in, you do a further four weeks of uh, uh, lectures, um, and then you have your exams. So that's the basic structure of, of the program. So at the faculty, we organize the lectures. At the college level, which by the way, the co colleges are the ones that admit the students, not the faculties. So you're applying straight to a college, not to the faculty. At the college level, the supervisions get organized, the small group supervisions. To give you an idea about contact hours, is you, usually each lecture is 32 to 40 hours. So in the first year, it would be times five. And for each of those courses or papers, you have 10, roughly 10 hours of supervisions. So the contact hour in small groups is, is quite substantial. It's around 50 hours, if not more, actually, in the first year, okay? And the other great, the other fantastic things about colleges in Cambridge is that it's not just the academic component, but the colleges really look after the students in terms of tutorial support. 
So whether it's you applying to college to get uh, funding to go to uh, a travel grant, to go traveling around the world, needs to be supported by your tutor generally, to if you have any problems whatsoever, uh, the tutor is there for you. Every single student is assigned uh, a tutor. If there's something you want to discuss and you don't feel comfortable discussing with your academics or the director of studies, your tutor is there to help you. So the support mechanism at Cambridge is, is absolutely fantastic. So supervision system is magical. Tutorial system is absolutely fantastic. And then finally, for, I obviously, all of you will want to do a PhD and uh, you know, uh, go into academia, but for those that don't want to do that, we also, uh, uh, the amount, of, I mean, 90% of our candidates, I think is about right, 90% of our candidates will go into industry. So they will go into uh, banking, investment banking. They will go into management consulting. They will go to economic consulting. Uh, they, lots, of, lots of them will go into government economic services, the civil service. Uh, a lot of people uh, will, uh, will join international organizations, uh, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund. So it really is wide. People go into public sector and private sector. Uh, uh, out of about one out of ten generally tends to continue to do a master's and then a PhD. So there, you know, ten percent is quite, quite a lot actually. But most of, uh, most of our students will go and uh, uh, st start in the industry. And I was told, um, I don't know whether it's true or not, but our, in terms of career prospects, Cambridge is number one in, in the country. Um, so I think I, I think I stopped there and I'll let you uh, ask uh, any questions you want.